Actually, first I want to begin by just thanking for this opportunity. The opportunity to share some ideas uh, with those of you that uh, we don't get to see here all the time. But let me begin. Zachinu. Zachinu. This is Shefa. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. B'nai Torah, find a Yidin, there's a Shefa. There's a Shefa of, a Shefa of Gashmi. It's a lot different than it used to be. The oil of my yeshivas today is supported by B'nai Torah. It's a different world. It's not a matter of making up stories and chanufa and whatnot and begging and being mashbil oneself. There's a malitz in the Svasemis, the Svasemis in Menachis, where the Gemara there is trying to figure out the badim and the orin were they perpendicular to the long side of the arm or the short side of the arm? Zok de Gemara, they have to be perpendicular to the long side of the arm because you have to fit two levim in there. They're carrying it. Frektis why can't they stand on the outside? So he writes, Kaimalon, Lecha, Kaimalu, Hulacha, Chomim, that the Noise Ho'orin, that the Toim Chayat Torah have to be Mibfnim, they have to be on the inside. There's a big difference between the Tumchei Torah on the inside and people that are far. I heard Ron Kotter, Zechron Levracha wrote in a, he wrote in a letter. Shaitan Pasigates Chayim Hila Machzikim Bava Samchem Ushar, and he said, he said there, it's Chayim Hila Machzikim Bava, those who hold on to Torah, knowing that. By their supporting, it's not that they're keeping Torah going, it's Torah that's giving them life. It's Chaim He Lamachzikim, but those who hold on to it. The Samcheha, those that think that Torah needs them to be held up. Mu'ushar, no, Oichetepes. The Iker is the Toimche Torah, the people who recognize that Torah is life giving, that Tmichas Torah is life giving. It's a schus to be machzik Torah. So to begin with, we're in a different kufa. And Baruch Hashem, there's a shefa of Gashmias. Shefa of Gashmias among from fine Yidin Shemir, not only Shemir Mitzvahs, Emes, Emes, Bnei Torah. But along with that, along with that comes a whole new set of issues. You know, the Jewish home in many places, in the finest of communities, the Jewish home doesn't look like it used to. There's the chef of Gashmi, and it becomes obvious. And it strikes you when you walk in. And the question is how to deal with that. Is that good? Is that not good? So the Mishnah tells us, Kari Dagashal Torah. Pas pa melech toichal, maim ba msura tishte, alor it's tisha and chay it's tar tichye, a Torah to omel, vim a tor yisekein, a shrecho ba toiv lach, a shrecho ba yil mazeh, toiv lach lo yil mabo. So there are two mahalchim in the Rishonim in this Mishnah. Rashi, we have Rashi on Ovis. Rashi says the Mishnah is not talking about someone who can afford more than Paspa Melech and Maimam Surah. If you can afford it, why should you have Paspa Melech and Maimam Surah? Have Basavayai? Zok Rashi, we're talking about someone who doesn't have. Zok the Mishnah, even if it's Paspa Melech Toichal and Maimam Surah Tishte, still learn Torah, but Ashrech of a so we kind of understand Pshat in that. I mean, the Lushan of the Mishnah sounds like this is a Lachat 
פס במלך תויכל בים ועשרה, ואם אתה אוהב חי צר תחיה, ואם אתה אוהב איזה כן אשריך ותויב לך. What's פשטנית? What's פשטנית? So let's really ask ourselves, is it right or not right to have a nice place to live in? Is it right or not right to have luxuries? What did Rosh Hashanah create them for? For Goyim? <laughs> What did Rabbi Hashem create the Olam HaGashmi for? For everybody else? It's just a Nisoyen? Gashmi is a Nisoyen? He didn't create everything that this world has to offer and everything that man knows how to do with this world. He didn't create it for us. We make the bracha, the bracha, see, Lon is the beginning of Nisan. The Rabbi Hashem created a beautiful bria of Lahan Hashem B'nai Adam. He created it for us. And what does us mean? Not just B'nai, who are the real B'nai Adam? If not for B'nai Torah. So what's with the pasta melech toichel? What's ta'kev shat? What's ta'kev shat? I'll tell you, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing wrong with a beautiful house, and it's beautiful, enjoy it. Enjoy it. A home and everything else, and the vacay, everything, enjoy it. But not that it becomes a need. Not that when something is a bit imperfect, you can't sleep at night. Oh, the designer toilet has a chip. You're going to sue them? No, that, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. When it becomes a necessity, when it becomes a something, then you're in trouble. When your priorities start getting messed up, then we're in trouble. I talk about priorities. And then, is, you know, we really have to think. I always joke about it, but it's not a joke. I'm telling you, every time I see this remote, <laughs> I see this remote, I don't know what to do with it. You know, by opinion of Ben, we say, but my, but my boy is Tfei. The Koyan asks, my boy is Tfei, what do you want? You want your bincha b'charecha, or you want the money? So everybody says it's a Melitza, come on. All right. In the Ramah, there's a Chiddush that if you want to tell the Koyin, take my son, I want to keep my five Shkolim, you can't do that. Who is this Ramah talking to? A normal human being is going to offer the Koyin his son instead of five Shkolim. Who are we talking to? Someone that can read a Ramah is going to do such a thing. I, every time I read, I, who's the, what's the Ramah saying? There's a Havam in it. There's a Havam in here. You know something? Nobody will say it, but a lot of people do it. When it comes to priorities, people choose where to live and how to live And often it's a choice between what's better for the parnasse and what's better for the children. And not, every, not everybody makes the same decision. There are plenty of people that for the sake of enhancing their parnasse don't have a relationship with their kids, barely with their wives. <laughs> They're taking the slime over the... Okay, it's more than five slime. Okay. No, how much are your kids worth? Huh? How much? I don't know. People go, go, go for Pesach. I'm, 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 I didn't come here to scream at anybody. People go to Pesach for Pesach. You know, listen. If you live in a... You know, Baruch Hashem, a, a large apartment with lots of things... Making Pesach is complicated. It's so much easier to go away. Okay, Baruch Hashem, the Heksher's good. I don't know if you're teenage boys, that's the place to be. I don't know if it's for you either, but for your teenage boys, for sure not. So that comes first. That, that's what Yontif is supposed to look like. That's what Pesach is supposed to look like. The food is got kosher. The, uh... I'm 
I was never there. But I've dealt with so many yeshiva bachrim who come to me and say that the preachers is such an Isayan. Can I tell my parents I'm not coming to them for Pesach? What are your priorities? Yes, enjoy. The Rabbanisha made it for you. But don't mix your priorities up. Don't make too much of it. And certainly make the right cheshben when it's a question of the chinuch of your children. Don't go further. Yes, he's sent to yeshiva, fine. I, everything's wonderful. But you got to make sure that your lifestyle is not communicating that gashmius means too much. You know, it's so beautiful in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, it doesn't look like it used to. Rechov Me'asharim doesn't look like it used to. I was thinking, you know, the old shuls, they don't have cobblestone floors anymore. I think this, the stores are not the good old ones. Uh, no, things have changed. It's not what it was. But I'll tell you, Gashmi still means nothing to people here. That's not the way they make decisions. Gashmi means nothing. Gashmi means nothing here. Don't enjoy. Yeah, I mean, like they, with, with a, a, a boyish, you know, uh, exuberance. Wow. They got some new, some new apparatus. But Kashmir doesn't mean anything. It's not priority. That's not what we live for. Yes, it's a gift from the Rabbi Nishleilam. But it's not what we live for. It should not be part of your decision-making process when it comes to the chinach of your children. It should not be part of the decision-making process. I mean, we're to spend a young diff. We're to spend a young diff. And you're home too. What is the message you're giving your kids? And of course, the time you spend with the time you spend with your kids versus time you spend doing something else. That's Pshat and Rashi. That's how Rashi is learning up the Mishnah. Yes, Paspa Melech Toichal, Maimam Sur Tishte. You should be able to do that. Baruch Hashem, you have a shefa, but if you wouldn't, you'd also learn. You'd also learn. <laughs> Rabbi Shari Ailey tells his Talmidim, tells his Talmidim, you know, his, his family is from Yerushalayim, a good few diarists. He said when he was growing up, they told him, they told him that when we were kids, Sometimes there was food, sometimes there wasn't food, but there was always terror. You know, when you, you bring your kids up like that, you get a rabasher. <laughs> it's not the only ingredient, but it helps. Kids have to know. Kids have to know. What do you live for? What do you live for? Certainly our society understands the supreme value is Torah, period. Kashmis is nice. It's a bracha from the Rabbi Dishalai. And you thank him for every bit of it. And you know it's a personal gift from him because he got it to you. But you can do without it. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Okay, that's, that's the first thing. That's Rashi's Pshat. Which then brings us to the Rambam. So there's no Rambam there. But the Rambam in the Yad, in Hilchas Talmud Torah, Paragitmal, Allah brings the Mishnah. The Rambam tells us a person shouldn't think, a person shouldn't think They'll be Isaac and everything else. And he'll work to get Ashiris. And he'll also learn. 
So the Rambam, if you want to be zoicha to kiss Rishul Torah, you have to push everything else away. And just learn, and he brings the Mishnah of Dark, yeah, Kaki Dark Rishul Torah. Chazal said, Kaki Dark Rishul Torah, Pas Ba Melech Toichal, Maim Ba Tishte. He sees that as a mild. As a mild. So the Rambam, the Yikr in the Rambam, is that you shouldn't spend time doing anything else and just be happy with your pas and melech. The going, it's brought in Ibn Shlema, he's marichan, he's tapkus, and he talks about Torah, the Torah Shalomati Ba'af. He says the, the only way to really, really, really be zeicha to the spitz of Torah is mitoichat chak. That's a value. So I, I, I want to extend this one a little also. I don't think what the going means is that dafka, dafka you have to starve in order to be an emes at Talmud Chochem. I don't think so. Hagam, the Welt sagt, that the difference between Akash of Rebbe Kiveger and Akash of the Rashash, you can answer the Rashash, you can't answer Rebbe Kiveger, is because Rebbe Kiveger knew what it meant to learn Mitoichat <laughs> Chak, and the Rashash was a banker. He financed the printing of Talmud Bavli. <laughs> but, but I think there's much more to it. And here anyway, I want to talk a little bit about current events. And it's a very delicate subject. And make sure you understand it right. It's a very, very, very delicate subject. Our manhigim here in Eretz Yisrael, have been very weary of yeshiva light being involved in doing things, be it for soldiers on the front, even, even for families of the soldiers, even in terms of davening for the taking names and davening. And what they've said is, you're bringing the army into the yeshiva. What do they mean? So I would like to share with you something that's become a major issue. It's become a major issue here. Do you know that there are a lot of yeshiva bachrim in Eretz Yisrael that are jealous? They're jealous. They're jealous of the, the soldiers on the front. I mean, you got to know. I mean, listen. With all of our problems in Eretz Yisrael, with the fact that, unfortunately, with all the moistus atur, and nevertheless, this is, this is not a religious, it's not a religious country. The entire state wasn't built on religion. Nevertheless, there are some values that every Yid carries with him. From or fry, and they're very much alive in Eretz Yisrael. And one of them is Mesir Snefesh for Klal Yisrael. Yes, soldiers are drafted into the army, but they volunteer for combat units. And a large percentage of them are frum, bedafka. They're there beshita. They're not looking for excitement. If you ever heard them talk, everyone entering Aza knows there's a very good chance he may not come back. They're not kidding themselves. And they're going willingly. They're ready to be mockered themselves for Klal Yisrael. And there are a lot of yeshiva bachrim that are so jealous because there is nothing, nothing more meaningful, nothing more life-giving than Mesir Snefesh. So where's the problem? The problem is, let me tell you, 
I know when I was growing up. Sure, many of you had the same experience. Most of my friends did not stay in yeshiva too much longer. After, you know, post high school, they did not see themselves as, as full-time learners. And it wasn't so much in style. Remember in our shtivel, yeah, they were nice people. They were all survivors. Quite a few told me they to, you know, from behind. But you were on the defensive. You were on the defensive, yeah. Bank fetches. No, tachlis, tachlis. Anyone that chose to remain in yeshiva did so with mysterious nefesh. You knew you were there because you wanted to learn. You knew you were there because you made a choice. This is what I want to be number one in my life. It's worth every sacrifice. This is what the world stands on. Every one of us believed in that. There was an idealism, a real feeling of Messir Snefesh. There was an electricity. We got up in the morning knowing why. Baruch Hashem, now things have turned around. If you're not in yeshiva, you're on the defensive. Uh, at least pretend you are, otherwise no one's going to marry you. It's the other way around. And because of that, so much of this feeling of mysterious nefesh was lost. I remember, I remember of Schneer screaming. I mean, he didn't scream so much, but... He spoke with conviction, and you could tell it was the fire of his father because Rav Aaron said this all the time. He would always go, it was a matter of throwing away, throwing away everything else, every other interest, every other all, to be, to be Mekadosh, Kodesh, Kedoshim. It's unfortunate. There's got to be a revival of the Messiris Nefesh. There's got to be a revival of the Messiris Nefesh. When Yeshiva Bachrim are jealous because they feel that what they're doing is just learning. Just learning! What do you mean just learning? You're learning! You're learning Tarz Hashem! You're keeping the world going! Every bit of Torah is giving life to the world. It's giving life to Klal Yisrael. Everyone's got to feel that. It's got to be an understanding that learning is about Messiris Nefesh. It's a choice. It's not just in style. It's a choice. And there's no competition. There's no competition. We live with meaning and for meaning like nobody else. That has to be clear. Every Ben Tur has to feel that. Every Ben Tur has to be reminded of that by his parents and by his grandparents and by his rebellion and by his friends. That's what it's about. This Mishnah is telling us that that's what it means. That's what it means to be sitting and learning. It's that nothing else matters, come what may. We're willing to make every sacrifice for the sake of Kiyam Torah. That's what it's supposed to be. Then there's no competition. Then you don't have to worry. Then we can daven and feel for people whose lives are in danger and for families who are suffering. 
and we don't have to worry about yeshiva bochum questioning what they're doing in yeshiva. I know this is very delicate. It's very, very delicate. I take it that everyone here is mature enough to deal with such a message. Hi, your Hashem should help. Rabbanu Hashem should help. Klal Yisrael should have a Yeshua. And the Olam Torah should keep growing, but not just growing in numbers, and not just growing in the amount of Torah that's learning and the quality of Torah that's learning in Baruch Hashem, we're zoichet to more and more and more of an amkis. But we should grow in its conviction, in its mysterious nefesh, where every Ben Torah knows that he's doing this because he's chosen this as first priority above everything else that life has to offer. With such mysterious nefesh, with that kind of feeling, oh, then we're really going to keep Klal Yisrael going. Then we'll be Zoycha to the Gula Shalim. Bem Hera the Amen.